In the headlines, several persons killed, others abducted as bandits raid communities in Zamfara. Bandits rustle 500 cows, 150 sheep in five Katsina villages. APC, PDP in Zamfara trade words over banditry and insecurity. And on the foreign scene, India takes strict measures amid fears of COVID-19 catastrophe. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Aywelia. Thank you for joining. The news in details. Several persons are killed and unspecified number abducted when suspected bandits raided six different communities in Anka and Bukuyum local government areas of Zamfara State. State Commissioner for Information Ibrahim Dosara confirmed the incident. Dosara said security forces, especially the military, have need have promptly deplo de deployed to repel the attack and ensure normalcy returns to the affected area. The suspected bandits had sacked six communities where they killed, destroyed valuables, abducted and displaced several persons, including women and children in the affected communities. The bandits, who are reported to be numbering about 300, armed with dangerous weapons, invaded the communities on motorcycles and started shooting sporadically, which led to killing scores of residents, including 10 vigilante operatives who battle with the bandits to defend the communities. Residents of the affected communities have fled to Anka for safety. You know, armed men loyal to terror kingpin known as Belloturji, who are displaced by NAF attacks on their enclaves in Fakai Forest in Shinkafi, local government area of Zamfara State, are regrouping in another forest in western part of the state. Daily Trust reports that the armed bandits are erecting dozens of new touched huts in an area inside the forest. Residents say the criminals are moving on motorbikes, with some of them working and guarding uh, and goading herds of cattle. On Wednesday, the armed men attacked about five communities of Kurufadanya, Kurufamagaji, Rafingero, Tungar Isa, and Barayar Zaki in Bukuyum and Anka local government areas. Residents said that about 60 people were killed. The villagers are few kilometers, the villages are a few kilometers apart. Uh, residents further said that the remains of those killed are being picked for burial. They said a lot of people are afraid to go to deep inside bushes to recover the bodies of the slain persons. Spokesman of the State Police Command, SP Mohammed Shehu, could not be reached for comment on uh, for comment up to the time of filing this report. At least over 500 cows, 150 sheep, as well as goats have been rustled by bandits at Umwala, Jino, Dantsauni, Barawa and Tankuri villages of Batangarwa and Batsari local government areas in Katsina state. The bandits who stormed the villages in their hundreds also go away with money and other valuables estimated at about 15 million naira. Trust TV Abdullahi Amadi completes the report. According to the locals, the bandits engaged in house-to-house -house search of cows, sheep, goats, and any other vulnerable stormed communities on motorcycles, shooting sporadically to scare the villagers. At Kaladu and Juno villages, the bandits went away with four motorcycles, in addition to animals and other valuables. This is the third time the bandits are attacking Jino, Barawa and Kaladu villages, all in Batagarawa local government. The bandits, according to the villagers, were scared by the police after hearing shootings from all angles, but yet they went away with all the animals and other valuables from the villagers. Mm. When they came at night, we were so many, but you know, I'm a cripple. I can't run. All the rest of the people we were sitting together, they ran away and I left, I was left alone. They met me and they asked me to show them houses where there is motorcycle 
where the animals such as cows and so on they forced me to show them the houses they went into every house here and they collected my phone and of course they collected over 20,000 naira from me the village head thanked the villagers and the police who mobilized to disperse the bandits and called for more prayers for God's protection. He said, as it is now, prayer and adequate mobilization to confront the bandits is the only option to secure communities being ravaged by criminals. The bandits came in large number. They came at night around 11 o'clock. They attacked us. They went into every house here in search of valuables, motorcycles, cows, and any other thing you may think of. They were shooting at all angles. We thank the police. The security and civil defense corps who are just very close to us here and we thank them for their gesture. We commended their efforts. When contacted, the police public relations officer, Katana State Police Command SP Gambo Isha, confirmed the attack and told Trust Television that the bandits were dispersed by the police using armored personnel carrier and recovered some animals. In Katana, Abdullahi is Mayamadi reporting for Trust Television News. Now, in a similar vein, armed bandits killed two passengers and abducted 40 others along Gembu Bali Road, Taraba State, on Wednesday evening. Daily Trust reports that the bandits who were armed blocked the Jamtari Gayam axis along Gembu Bali Road and abducted passengers into the forest. Magaji Sadiq gives an update. Armed bandits have killed two people and abducted over 40 passengers along 30 Bali Road. The incident happened yesterday at around 1 30. A source from the area told TV trust that the bandits blocked the road and start shooting on approaching vehicles, forcing drivers to stop. They took the, the, the victim into the forest and up to now their whereabout is unknown. The spokesperson of Toronto Police Command, DSP Usman Abdullahi, confirmed the incident but said uh, the number of those abducted cannot be ascertained at this moment. In a related development, the community of Mehula and Boli local government chased about 600 strangers that came into the town in two trucks. The community mostly used suspected that the strangers are bandits. Now, some Zaria residents expressed shock and dismay after police arrested a woman and another syndicate procuring women for bandits in the forest. The suspects have told investigators how they assisted the bandits in return for monetary benefits. Trust TV Aisha Salehu has the report. As a result of the incessant banditry in Zaria town of Kaduna State, some residents take advantage of the situation to supply bandits with young women for the sake of prostitution, which has become a means of business. A youth, Muslim Abubakar, a resident of Sakadadi in Zaria, who sells mobile phones and accessories at PZ Sabungari, and a 23-year-old lady, Fatima Jaber, confessed that the bandits reached out to them to procure women for them in their enclave in Gadaumawa Forest. <laughs> They asked me to find girls for them, and I said I would. So I called Ummi, and she said we have to go to the person in charge of the mission. So we went there. I gave the girls out for prostitution, and if the girls refuse to comply, the bandits may shoot us. Also from Zaria, Mariam Abubakar is accused of taking women to bandits in the bushes, including her own relatives, for a fee. For more than 10 years now, I have been supplying bandits with women, including my own children and relatives. 
The case of Jumai Al Hassan, a housewife living in, living in Tankara Ward of Madaki in Zaria, is even more sympathetic. She said fear of her own life and abduction of her loved ones made her submit herself to one of the bandits in the bush. The bandits threatened to kidnap me and my family. One of them said if I don't sleep with him, he will kidnap me. I begged him not to, but he refused. After he was done with me, at first he refused to give me transportation fare, but he later gave me 5,000 naira. However, some other residents of the village addressed the dastard act while condemning those who aid the bandits. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. A woman taking her children for sexual uh, benefits. Oh, it is, it is unfortunate for a woman to take her children to unknown people for sexual benefit. Kai, she's, she's also a bandit. Honestly speaking, you, uh, because how can you take yourself to bandits for sexual uh, pleasure and say that you are doing it for uh, protection of your husband? It's a lie. Her father. Her father is a lie. So let the authority uh, prosecute that woman if she's in their hand. Yes. Uh, personally, I think it's rather unfortunate because um, I had to concede with open mind and without prejudice that despite the austere economic condition, but I think it would be very, very unfortunate for a woman to trade or to take her daughters to the bandits actually for monetary gain. I think it's unfortunate. And it would be too disingenuous for me to, to not to say that, that people should not and should not be doing this kind of thing, no matter how overstretched they are. Activities of banditry, kidnapping, and now a business avenue of supplying women to bandits have become a menace in which security operatives put in efforts to arrest and prosecute perpetrators. Federal Road Safety Corps has confirmed the death of at least 19 passengers in a fatal accident involving two commercial buses at Bagoda in Bebeji local government area of Kano State. 26 other passengers were also reported to have sustained various degrees of injuries. The accident, according to the FRSC sector commander in the state, Zubairu Mato, happened on Thursday morning around 7.25 when the two vehicles carrying 45 passengers collided at Bagoda, close to Nigerian Law School, Kano campus. The sector commander said that the victims are at Kura General Hospital for treatment while all the corpses have been handed to the deceased relatives by the police for burial while the vehicles involved in the accident have been handed over to Bebeji Police Division in Bebeji local government area of the state. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Caesarean procedure gone wrong. Do stay with us shortly. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Nigerian
Thanks for staying. You're watching Trust News Update. Let's have another look at some of the major stories again. Several persons were said to have been killed and unspecified number abducted when suspected bandits raided six different communities in Anka and Bukuyum local government areas of Zamfara State. Plus, at least over 500 cows, 150 sheep, as well as goats have been rustled by bandits at Inwala, Jino, Tansoni, Barawa, Tankuri villages of Batagarawa, and Batsari local government areas in Katsina State. Nigeria Center for Disease Control says 791 cases are reported across the country and on Thursday a slight decrease from Wednesday's number of 856. The agency in its update for January 6th said that the new cases are recorded in 13 states and the Federal Capital Territory. The NCDC said 262 persons are discharged after recovering from the infection, while eight persons died. The country's death toll stands at 3,066. Now, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission secured a total of 2,220 convictions across all its commands in 2021. The EFCC, in a statement on Thursday, said the 2,220 recorded uh, represents a 98.49% success rate in prosecution, as the Commission lost only 34 cases during this period. Executive Chairman of the EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, commended the personnel of the Commission for their industry and dedication despite the challenges of criminal prosecution in court. According to the statement, this is the highest conviction secured by the anti-graft agency since inception, a 1,127.5% a improvement from the 1,280 convictions recorded by the agency in 2019. Lagos command of the agency recorded the most convictions 481, closely followed by Ibadan Command with 324 convictions, while the Port Harcourt Zonal Command had 230 convictions. Now, needing surgical intervention for, for an illness or severe injury is common among adults, and for most, the process is straightforward. Most surgeries performed are completed without any complications, as the doctors and medical staff who you entrust with your life, uh, with your medical care, are highly trained and fully capable of getting you on the road to recovery. However, there are instances when things don't go as planned, when a surgery is required. Complications can take place through no fault of your surgeon or due to a negligent mistake. Zainab Bala looks at the story of Irene Emmanuel, who had a cesarean section to birth her baby, but the procedure went so. It happened on the 5th of November last year, when I was due for my third scar. I normally register with uh, primary health care, so whenever it's due, they will not refer me to general for my CX. So that is what happened that day too. They referred me because they themselves they were on strike. So when I went to General Hospital, they told me that there is no bed. That even people that register with them, they are just referring them. So I should just go back to that health care. So when I went back to that primary health center, I told the doctor that they didn't accept me because they said there is no bed. So the man said, okay, that we should not worry. That I have a doctor that he will call that is perfect. That he will do it well for me. That is a private hospital. Even my husband was asking him, do you know about the man? He said, yes, the man has done so many surgeries that you know about him very well, that you will call him. So when he called the doctor, the doctor came. So even, it's even the doctor that took us to his hospital. So after everything, they take me in for the CX. The CX was successful, I came out. But two days after the CX, I started knowing that my tummy started swelling up. I was not even comfortable with my body anymore. I was having pains within me. So they were just trying all their food just for me to pass out girls. 
but I could not pass out gas, nor stew. So after the sixth day, that was when the man said that they would take me in again for another surgery. So that they can bring out the intestine and wash it. So that was what happened. The man took me in for another surgery. So after I came out from that surgery, the next day, pieces started coming out from my body. I started passing out pieces from my private parts, from where he did the previous surgery. We were just flowing uncontrollable. So the next day, he told my husband to go and buy adult pampas for me. That's what we started using. I even used almost three pack here. Yeah. So I started losing strength day by day. I could not talk, could not even do anything. If anybody that came to visit, I would just be looking at them. So he now said that this thing is passing his power. He now refer me to Gogwalada specialist. So when we get to Gogwalada specialists, it's even by God's grace too. Because there, everywhere was filled up. I was inside the car. My husband was just running up and down just to see the doctor. So they said there is no vacant, that they, they should just calm down. So my husband said that this is an emergency, but I cannot even breathe anymore. That this is an emergency, they should come and attend to the wife. So when they came, they saw my baby. My baby was just little to them. They now asked her, which child is this? They said, this is the mother. So the doctor now said, like, hey, this baby is too small to lose the mother. Let's see what we can do. So the doctor went in. Before you know it, they came out, they rushed me in. So when the doctors came, they now said that they would take me in the next morning for an emergency operation. So that was where they take me in the next day for another surgery. So when they take me in for the surgery, the next day they came to the world. So they now told my husband that ah, your wife is really a lucky woman. That what we saw in that theater, in fact, that which doctor that did this kind of mistake, that the man mistakenly cut my intestine, which can that is by God's grace that I'm alive, safe. Even when they went to the theater, that the only thing that they can do to save my life is to bring out that intestine outside. Because if they say that they should be joining it, they will not make it. So that this intestine will be outside for six months. We were like, how, how are we going to manage intestine outside for six months? If they say there is now, a support group for the presidency of Vice President Yamil Simbanjo for the 2023 presidential race, Opinion Leaders Consolidation Group, says that the vice president is a man with the credentials to take Nigeria to promised land. Speaking when they paid a courtesy call on the management of Media Trust, its, management, its chairman, Alhaji Shetima Umar Abba Ghana, said that they are rooting for the vice president out of patriotism and because of his proven competence. Aliu Usman reports. As the electioneering process for the 2023 general elections get into gear, different interest groups are already canvassing the positions of their favored candidates for the nation's top job. One of such organizations is the Opinion Leaders Consolidation Group, which promotes the candidacy of Vice President Yemi Oshibajo for the presidency. We feel he's eminently suitable because so a lot of us have had contacts with him in the past and we know about him and we think he's a very, very good material for, for this leadership position. At the meeting with the management of Media Trust Limited, the group admits that it is acting on its own volition and isn't deterred by the vice president previously denying any interest in the presidential race. Its chairman, Al Haji Shatimo Umar Abbagana, said Vice President Oshibaju is a good man and they have resolved to promote his candidacy. First of all, he's a good Nigerian and an honest Nigerian. And I know his honesty because I personally have seen it. Okay, I'm from Lagos, uh, and therefore I know what I'm talking about. So if somebody who has shown honesty, has shown loyalty to the government, loyalty to the Mr. President as he's serving now, and in a very, and a very, uh, a very sound person, because if you talk to me, you now know the man is probably a professor of law and has been practicing law, and very sound and very, very humble, and very, very even. And the, his, the way he carries himself is what has impressed most of us. The entourage, which also includes former Senator Joseph Akagege, also commended President Muhammad Buhari for his neutrality 
in the politics of who succeeds him. Ali Usman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Meanwhile, a northern group Arewa Consensus Assembly is calling for zoning of the APC presidential ticket to the southwestern parts of the country for fairness and inclusivity. Chairman of the group, Daniel Shawulu, made the call in Kaduna. He said calls for retention of the power in the north is not patriotic. The joint conference resolved and hereby declares that it is appropriate invariable and inescapable that the choice of the presidency in the 2023 election must emerge from the southwest region of Nigeria. The consequences of the not failure to accede and participate in ensuring and supporting rotation of power to the southwest will be dire for the short and the long-term political and developmental interests and relevance of the not. Failure to urgently and actively support and participate in this objective may divide the knot irreparably and potentially severe the political alignment within the knot. Such a division or misalignment will damage the knot politically and potentially erode the influence of the knot in presidential and national assembly leadership electoral selection processes. Accordingly, the joint conference says that it is abhorrent unacceptable and roundly rejected by Nigerians that a presidential and vice presidential ticket will be dominated by candidates of the same faith, such as Muslim, Muslim or Christian, Christian. Under no circumstances should any aspiring or hopeful political candidate or candidacy be a consideration in the current national state of Nigeria. The joint conference after considering religious demography of, of Nigeria, sentiments, views, and opinions across the country concludes and recommends that a more probable electoral ticket will be a Christian Southern Western candidate match with a Muslim vice from the north. Nigeria for long has been suffering from inconsistency of implementation of policies and programs, although the joint conference met is about this. Now on the foreign scene, India has reported 117,100 new COVID-19 cases, the most since early June of last year, as the Omicron variant takes Delta, overtakes Delta in the cities. The Health Ministry on Friday also reported 302 new deaths, taking the total to 483,178. Total infections stand at 35.23 million. An overnight curfew has been imposed in the capital, New Delhi, and weekend movement restrictions will begin on Friday evening with all non-essential workers asked to stay home. Daily infections have nearly tripled over two days this week. India is bracing for a deluge of COVID cases with authorities in several cities bringing in restrictions in a bid to keep infections in check. And with that, we wrap up Trust News Update. Remember, you can follow us across all social media handles and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Thank you for watching. My name is Aiwe Bye for now.